Hello guys, uh, this is Sonu Satyadas. Today we are going to discuss about the minimal APIs in .NET 6. As everyone knows, uh, .NET 6 is the latest framework from Microsoft and uh, the latest implementation of .NET in uh, open source. And if you see, in .NET, they have introduced lots of new features, and one of the new feature is minimal API. So if you are a .NET developer, you must be familiar with the uh, web API development using this API controllers. So we can create a web API project that may comes with uh, uh, one or more API controllers. You can create model classes, you can do data binding, you can do data validations, you can do everything. You can do uh, document APA documentation, versioning, anything that you can do in a web API application. But when while creating microservices, you can create simple minimal APIs with .NET 6. Which means you don't need to go and create the API controllers and uh, write actions for uh, API endpoints. You can create very simple web APIs or RESTful services in .NET 6 with the help of minimal APIs. This minimal APIs brings very minimal dependencies means in a api controller based application if you create it is loaded with a, uh, a set of dependencies libraries which we may use or may not use in our applications but this minimal apis brings only relevant uh, dependencies and whatever else features you need you can explicitly add them into the project so you can create this minimal apis in the, using a very simple syntax you can use the web application object to define the api endpoints you can use the map functions for defining this api endpoints like a map get map post map put and map delete Every map function takes minimum two arguments. First argument is the API endpoint URL or uh, root template. And the second argument is a Lambda expression. The Lambda expression is acting as an action when you make a request to that API endpoint. You can have parameters to this uh, Lambda expressions. You can have uh, dependencies that can be used in that uh, actions. So this concept is inspired from the uh, minimal API concept that is already available in Express.js. If you are a, a Node.js Express API developer, you can easily understand the syntax of this minimal APIs. If you see a minimal API application start with a web application object, so you need to create a uh, web application builder object first, and you can register all your dependencies inside that service collection of that builder. Later, you create the web application object using the build method, and then you can define your uh, API actions, that means the map methods. Here you can see an example that is used to return the book object using an ID. This root template takes uh, ID as a parameter in the root. And you can see in the Lambda expression, we have an ID as well as a book database context object. And using this uh, DB context object, you, you can query the database and get the data and then uh, return the result if the book is found. 
if the book is not found you can return a result that is not found result for api documentations we can still use the swagger so for uh, better documentation you can specify the uh, api response methods or response status codes we can specify the endpoint name you can also specify the uh, tags that can be used in the swagger documentations while creating this uh, minimal apis there are some challenges or limitation that you have because since it is a minimal uh, api or minimal uh, framework for building your uh, web apis it does not provide all the features that you get in the api controllers for example if you want to use the action filters authorization filters or result filters kind of uh, filters you want to use you cannot use them in minimal apis similarly you can you cannot perform the model validations typically when we receive the model object we perform the model validation using the model state dot is valid or we can do explicit validation using the try validate model of function but that kind of model validation is not possible in uh, minimal apis similarly there is a limit in supporting the form binding so if you want to bind the form data that is not supported specific, specifically for this i form file controls but yes uh, in future they may add support for the form binding but there is no support for the o data querying method and you can you cannot perform the api versioning in minimal apis so if you are building a large scale api services yes still you can go and use this controller based uh, uh, rest apis but if you want to create a simple minimal apis yes the dotnet 6 minimal apis are the best uh, choice for you now we can see how the minimal apis can be created using visual studio for that let's open visual studio let me create a project so i can either select the asp.net web api project or i can use uh, asp.net core empty project to start with so i'm starting with the asp.net core empty next i'm going to give the project name as books api next so i'm selecting the document framework 6 and let's create so the project has been created and let's see what is there in the project so you can see there is a program.cs file which contains only four lines of code so we are creating a web application a web application class object and then there is a map get method which is a minimal api and then app dot run for starting this application and we also have an app settings dot json that is the typical configuration file for dotnet core so we can uh, put any kind of uh, application settings or connection strings in this uh, app settings dot json file to start with the uh, minimal api we are creating a simple model class and that model class is uh, going to create inside a folder so i'm going to add a new folder and let's name it as models and inside the models folder i'm creating a new class let's call it as book and this book class is our model class so let me declare some properties for the book 
let's uh, use the book title public string you can say author let's use price and use uh, number of pages and I can also declare a ISBN field. So let's keep it very simple. So I'm just keeping only five attributes, title, author, price, number of pages, and ISBN. I'm not adding any kind of validation since validation is not directly possible in <clears throat> the minimal APIs. I can also create a DB context class. So to use the DB context class, we need to uh, import some NuGet packages. And also, we are going to uh, use the Swagger documentation API or Swagger documentation for this APIs. So we can also install the Swashbuckle uh, NuGet package for the Swagger documentation. So let's go and install all the required NuGet packages. Let's go to manage NuGet packages and you can search for Microsoft.NDP framework core. Let's install the latest version. I can use the SQL Server or any other database for uh, in, uh, Entity Framework Core, but here I'm going to use the in-memory database. Since it is a demo application, I'm using the in-memory uh, uh, database for uh, demonstrating this. So for that, I'm going to install the Microsoft Entity Framework Core dot in-memory NuGet package. So I need to install the slash buckle dot ASP.NET code package for the Swagger API documentation. So let's select that and install. So we have installed all the required packages. So now we can go back and create the DB context. So for that, I'm going to use the global using statement. I'm using the Microsoft.NDT framework code as the global uh, using statement. So I can go back to my class. Here I can create a class. So here public class book db context, which is going to inherit from db context. Now I can create a constructor for this public book db context. Let's say uh, db context options of book db context options and let's pass it to the base base class constructor and i am going to create a db set also as well as you can see we have the db set created now we can go back to our program.cs and here we need to register the services inside the uh, applications object. 
So for that, first I'm going to use app filter dot services dot add db context. So let's use the book db context. So I can import this model classes also uh, as a global import or global using. So let's configure the in-memory database. So I can specify the database name as booksdb. Now, I can also use the Swagger API documentations. So I can say builder.services.add API, add endpoints API explorer. And also I can use uh, builder.services.add Swagger. So I can specify the Swagger documentation, uh, Swagger documentation service. And also I can specify the Swagger middleware. So I can say it's use Swagger. And also I'm gonna use the Swagger UI. I can say swagger slash v1 slash swagger dot json and also the name books API. Let's say c dot root prefix equal to empty. So here I have this uh, Swagger documentation configured. Let's run and test whether the Swagger page is loading or not. So let me run this. So here you can see the Swagger documentation page is loaded. And you can see the default hello world uh, root is or API endpoint is displaying here. So I can make a call to this. So here you can see this is the, giving the default output. So let's go and uh, uh, update the uh, endpoint. So here, what I'm going to do is calling this. Uh, I'm going to change this map kit option or map kit method, and I'm going to define all my uh, yeah, yeah, minimal API endpoints here. So <clears throat> yes, we can define all our minimal API endpoints here using this app dot map get, and you can uh, specify the routing pattern like uh, API slash books. So if I make a request to this API slash books, I need to get my complete list of books. So for that, I can return the books list from the database. To get the books list from the database, I need to inject the books DB service. So I need to go and uh, uh, in inject this book TV context. So this books DB book DB context. So it's not books, it's book DB context. So this book DB context is a service. So 
since it is a service if you want you can use the attribute like uh, from services it's not mandatory to use but yes if you want you can use the from services that's come from the microsoft.asp.mvc namespace so since we are using the latest version of dotnet for creating this api endpoints so it's not necessary to specify this from services attributes but yes i'm keeping this uh, for the convenience and i can use the uh, db dot books dot to list method we can get the complete list of books using this method since we can execute the methods database operations as asynchronous i can use or i can convert this method as an async method and let's call this using the await keyword so i can say var books equal to await of to list async so i'm going to call this uh, books dot to list method in an asynchronous method asynchronous way and uh, this returns the list of books in the database now i can return the results so i can say return the results dot okay which means it returns the okay result so this is enough for defining a minimal api so this will be the root template for the api endpoint and uh, we have an action method defined here as a lambda method that returns the list of books but yes we can also specify the uh, return uh, status code response status code for this so we can specify the status codes dot okay status code that means this method is going to return the http 200 status code that is okay we can also specify the uh, display name or group name or tag name so you can also specify with name with name is the endpoint name that you want to use for this uh, route that i can say get all books then i can say dot with tags i can say books api so this is my first uh, minimal api that is using uh, the books db context as a injectable service that produce the list of uh, books in the database so let's run this yes you can see here is the api slash books endpoint let's make a request to that So you can see there is no primary key defined in the books database since we are using this entity framework so as per the entity framework we have to specify at least uh, one uh, primary key field that means uh, it can be a there can be a composite key as well but yes we have to define a primary key field in our table we don't have any primary key field so if you want to create a primary key field you can specify the id and make this as a key column so you can specify the key attribute on top of this uh, id attribute now you can rerun this application so let's make a request now And you can see it returns an empty array as the result. That means currently I don't have any books in my database. So let's go and create another action for adding a new book into this. So after this first minimal API, that is the map get for returning all the books, 
I can write the next method map post for adding a new books. So I'm specifying this endpoint as uh, API slash books only. And here I can specify a asynchronous action, which takes the book as an argument type. And you can also inject the service. So here, if you want, you can specify from services. And here, book db context. We know that the post action is receiving the model object from the request body. So the .NET 6 automatically takes the minimal API, automatically takes the uh, book object from the request body. But still, if you want, you can explicitly specify the from body attribute uh, in front of this book object. So here I can define my method. So here we need to ex do explicit validation for this book object because like we do in our controller based uh, rest apis we cannot simply use the model state dot is uh, is uh, valid method because the model state is not available here in minimal apis so we need to do explicit validation which is which i'm not discussing at this point of time so since uh, uh, we have this book object available i'm going to in, uh, insert this book object into the table books table so let's go and uh, write a post action let's write a sync oh, sorry await db dot books dot add a sync and i can say book check then await db dot save changes async and we can return the book object so we can simply return the results dot created we can specify the url that is location url as well as the book object so I'm not including the location header here. So I'm making the empty string there. That means uh, it's not going to add any uh, location header in the response at this point of time. Yeah, after creating this uh, get by ID uh, API, we can update this uh, location attribute or location parameter. So currently I'm leaving it as empty string. Now we can go and uh, add the other parameters like I'm using this produces method for specifying the status code. Status code dot created I can specify. I can also specify with name and then I can specify as add a book that is the name of the endpoint and say with tags i can specify the same book api so you can see i have created the post action and now we can run and test whether this post action is working or not let's run the application yes you can see the get as well as the post methods are Appearing here, I'm going to try adding a new book object. Let's try adding this. So let's specify the ID as one. Let's say the title as sample book one, author name as demo writer. Price is 100. Number of pages, I can say 50. And ISPN value, I can say 
uh, maybe some number so let me submit this yes you can see the book is added to the table and let's go and uh, call this get action yes you can see it returns the newly added book so we can also write some more actions but before writing those actions let me tell you one thing right if you keep adding this uh, minimal apis in this program dot uh, cs itself so yes you can add any number of uh, uh, apis uh, map actions directly here but when you keep adding this uh, methods here it will increase the complexity of this uh, file so i recommend to uh, organize this apis uh, in a better way we can uh, keep this methods uh, in a separate file and with the help of extension methods we can uh, register this apis to the app object so that means if i want to create this uh, apis in a separate file let me go and add a new folder called apis and inside this apis i can add a new class uh, let me add uh, the class with the name uh, book api extensions so this i can make as a static class and inside the static i can register uh, the api uh, endpoints as an extension method to the web application object so i'm going to write an uh, extension method so let's give the name as register book apis and i can say this web application app so i'm going to register this to the app object so this app object is already here so we can move this code to the extension method you can see here now i have moved all my code to this uh, extension method but here you can see the uh, db context and the book class is not available here for making it available in the uh, other class i can declare this globally here and also i can uh, use this microsoft.aspnetcore.mbc that also i can declare as a global uh, uh, import or glo global namespace. Now, if I go back here, you can see all these methods are registered here. And this API, if I want to register, what I need to do is I need to use this namespace. So, this namespace I can import here. So, I have imported that namespace. Now, I can register this uh, here. After this swagger middleware, I can register this endpoints app dot register book APIs. So here I'm calling that extension method, and this is going to register all the API actions here. So let's run and check whether it is working as expected. Yes, you can see it's still working as expected. Now we can keep adding the additional methods into this extension method. So we already have this get and post methods. We can also add a get by ID method that is app dot 
map get and we can specify the template URL template as API slash book slash ID and ID must be an integer. So I'm using this constraint here and then I can say async uh, int ID uh, book db context db. So it's not necessary that you have to explicitly specify the from services and the from root attributes, but yes, I'm explicitly specifying here. So the from the root and from services attributes are added. And now we can go and find out the uh, book, whether it exists or not. So for that, I can say where book equal to await db.books.find async. And I'm going to find this book using this primary key ID. So if book is null, then I can say return results dot not found. Else I can say return results dot okay with the book object. And I can also add the additional methods that is required for the documentation. So here I say dot producers. So here we can expect two status codes, either not found, that is 404, or the 200 OK. So I'm adding both status codes. dot with name I can say here it is going to be get by ID so here if you want you can explicitly specify the type of this uh, return object that is a book type Yes, I have created this uh, API slash books slash ID uh, template or root template for returning the a single book item. So since we have added this uh, root, we can update our uh, created method. So here we can also specify the template here i can specify the id of that particular book book dot id to be coming here as the parameter so now we have three methods similarly i can add the additional two methods like the app dot map put where I can specify the uh, API URL template as API slash books slash ID. I can say it's an integer type. And it takes the parameters like uh, ID, which is coming from a root, then <clears throat> From the body, I'm going to return the book object. And from the services, I'm, I'm going to return the db context object. So let's go and find out the book which we want to update. So I can simply use where uh, pk equal to await 
db.books.findasync and I can say if book exist, I can say if dk equal to equal to null, I, I'll simply say it's not found. So return results dot not found. Else I can say add this book. So for that, I'm gonna do pk dot title equal to book dot title pk dot author equal to book dot author pk dot price equal to book dot price pk dot isbn equal to book dot isbn and pk dot number of pages equal to book dot number of pages so we have added all these fields and now we can say await db dot save changes async and return results dot ok of that updated book that is pk so we have this update method so i'm going to add this status force here users the first one is status codes dot not found. Another one can be producers of book object. It returns the OK results dot with name. I'll say update book and with tag. As you can say, books API. Similarly, I can add the delete method as well. So let me just copy this and update this to map delete. And it takes the ID as the parameter, and there is no need for this book object. And we are also injecting the DB context. So if we find the book in the database, we can delete it. Otherwise, we have to return the not found status quo. So we are searching for the book, and if the book is equal to null, we are returning the not found. Otherwise, we can say db.books.remove of bk and then db.save changes async. And then we can simply return books.no content as the results.no content as the uh, return status so here instead of 404 so we are going to use uh, 204 uh, not found sorry no content and then we can also specify the not found and here the Method with name is taking the delete book as the parameter. So here we have defined all the uh, API operations like uh, get all books, add a new book, get a single book, update book, and as well as the delete. So now let's go and run this. Yes, you can see here. Okay. So I have used a different tag name for this. So let me correct it. So here, 
Okay, so here I have used the capital. So let's update all together. Okay, so I think. Yes, so I'm going to add some books here. Let me add two books. First book with the ID one. Sample book one. Author, I can say demo user one. Price is 200. Number of pages 1 and the ISBN number is just some. Random characters. Let's run. You can see it's inserted the first book. So I'm going to insert one more book here. That is book number two. With sample book two. Demo user two. And let's leave the other things as it is. And execute. And you can say that book number two is added. Let's confirm this by calling this get all books. Here you can see it returns both the books. So I'm going to search for a single book. So let me search for the book number one. And I can see, yes, this is the book object that I have. Now I can try updating a single book. So for that, I go to the book method, try it out, specify the ID as one. And this object here is this. So sample book one, I can update to demo book one. And this author, I can say demo author. And then let's update this. See, you can see the book is updated. Now let's go and delete a book. So for deleting, I'm going to specify the ID one and say execute. And you can see it uh, returns 204, which means no content is returned but the action is executed successfully. Let's rerun the get all books. And now you can see only a single book that is a book with ID two. So that is the minimal API. So we have created a books API very quickly using this minimal API. So what we have done is we have created an extension method for this web application object and registered all the apis inside this extension method itself and then called this extension method from the program.cs while running this application so thanks for watching this bye